Hey guys, Corey here with another concept video. Today, it's all about cell division. In this video, we'll take a look at the process of meiosis. This process allows new life to be formed, which is pretty awesome. So let's get started. Now meiosis differs from other types of cell division as the purpose of meiosis is to produce what's called gametes or sex cells. And in humans, these are called sperm and egg. Now before we delve into our process, it's very important that you understand a little more about the differences between normal body cells and sex cells. Now body, or what we call somatic cells in organisms, have what's termed a diploid number of chromosomes. Whereas sex cells only have half this number and are referred to as haploid. So meiosis will be the division of diploid cells to create haploid cells. A key fundamental difference between diploid and haploid cells, apart from haploid having half the amount of DNA, is that diploid cells contain what's called homologous chromosomes. Now homologous chromosomes are pairs of chromosomes that come from mother and father during fertilisation. Each member of the homologous pair looks similar in length and contains similar genes. In actual fact, corresponding spots on homologous chromosomes will contain genes that code for the same thing. So in effect, diploid organisms have a backup of every gene, one from mother and one from father. In humans, we can say that a normal body cell contains 46 chromosomes, consisting of 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. Now, although homologous chromosomes code for the same characteristics, some genes may have slightly different forms, and in this case, these are called alleles. An example of this could be that maternal chromosomes may have an allele that codes for brown eyes, but the paternal chromosome may have an allele that codes for blue eyes. And it is the combination of these two alleles which determine the child's eye colour. Now in meiosis, we will actually be separating the homologous chromosomes when we halve the amount of DNA. So we can now say that the process of meiosis is the division of diploid cells to produce haploid cells that contain half the number of chromosomes and only one member of each pair of homologous chromosomes. It's also really important at this stage to recognise why we do this process. In essence, it allows for sexually reproducing organisms to exist. Now meiosis results in haploid sperm and egg, which contain half the original amount of DNA. This then allows for fertilisation, which is the joining of sperm and egg to restore the diploid number. For example, when humans reproduce, two sex cells, both containing 23 chromosomes, join to form a zygote, which is diploid and contains 46 chromosomes. If meiosis didn't occur, every time the organism reproduced sexually, the number of chromosomes would double, and that just doesn't make sense. Okay, now that we have some background, let's finally get to our process. But before we do, one final thing. There are actually going to be two sources of variation in this process which will ensure that each of our daughter's sex cells contains slightly varied DNA. The first source of variation is called crossing over, and the second will be called independent assortment, but more on that later. Now in short, meiosis is the division of diploid cells to produce four genetically different haploid cells, and it contains two main stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Each of these stages are split into the stages prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase, and can be summarised as follows. DNA replication will occur before meiosis, as it does with any cell division, and then the process starts with prophase 1. In this stage, the chromosomes condense and the homologous pairs join up. You can think of this as the start of your school formal. You may arrive in different cars, but when you reach the formal, the first thing you want to do is go and stand by your partner, just like homologous chromosomes do. Now let's follow this analogy and imagine that when you see your partner, you go up and give them a big hug. But then something weird happens, and each of yours and your partner's legs break off and swap places. Now that might sound a bit far-fetched, but that's exactly what happens to homologous chromosomes in prophase 1, and it's called crossing over. This is our first form of variation, and it results in the mixing of maternal and paternal genes. Now in metaphase 1, the homologous chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell with their partner. So in effect, we're going to have two lines of chromosomes in the middle of the cell. Using our analogy from before, we can now imagine that you're on the dance floor with your partner and the DJ asks you all to form two lines because you're going to do a line dance. Now of course you can line up next to your partner because it may result in a fight if you don't, but how likely is it that all the girls will line up on one side and all the boys on another? Not very I would think. 
And again, this also happens in your cells and is our second source of variation, called independent assortment. The homologous chromosomes line up with their partner in the middle of the cell, but do so randomly. And this will result in a random mix of maternal and paternal chromosomes when the two new cells are formed. Now in anaphase one, the homologous chromosomes are separated and moved to the opposite ends of the cell. In our analogy, this would be like your teachers separating all the partners on the dance floor and making you sit at opposite ends of the room. Now, because you align randomly on the dance floor, there will be a mix of boys and girls at either end of the room, but importantly, no one will be with their partner. And again, this is what happens in your cell. There will be a random mix of maternal and paternal chromosomes at either side of the cell, but no homologous chromosomes will be together. In telophase one, the cell separates and two haploid cells are formed. Each of these cells will contain half the number of chromosomes than the original parent, and will contain no homologous pairs. That's really important. Now, because our cells did DNA replication before the process started, we are able to do another division of these new cells, which will see the replicated chromosomes separated. This process, in essence, is the same as mitosis, just using haploid cells. In prophase two, the chromosomes condense again. In metaphase two, the chromosomes, each consisting of two identical sister chromatids, move to the middle of the cell in one line. In anaphase two, the sister chromatids of each chromosome are separated and moved to opposite ends of the cell. And in telophase two, new nuclear membranes form around the chromosomes, the cell elongates and then separates. The overall result of meiosis is four haploid cells, all of which are genetically different. As stated before, these cells can then join with other sex cells during fertilization to form a diploid zygote and restore the chromosome number. Well, that's it for meiosis. I hope it helped. And as always, check back soon for more concept videos.